Good morning people. It's Tuesday. I felt a bit under the weather yesterday so I didn't bother coming because it was a miserable day and I felt miserable. So I sat in front of the computer and vegetated. Uh, while I was there, sitting in front of the computer, I got lots of goodies delivered from uh, good old China. I've got 55 degree inside and outside cutters, 60 degree inside and outside cutters. An inside threading tool, about which I'm a bit dubious because it looks like if you sit it on its flats, it looks like it's going to come out with pronounced negative rake, but when you actually put a, an insert in it, it looks different. So I'm reserving judgment on that one. These things weren't expensive. And I've also got an external threading tool. Come out, come out. External threading tool. They should make these with a bigger shank. I could do with a bigger shank on that. I can live with it, but uh, I could do with a bigger shank on it. Uh, they don't seem to make one. So there you go. But uh, this should get me by for all my threads until I am set up to uh, to grind my own tubing. But to be honest, the outlay on this lot came to about 35 quid, I think. Which, to say I've got uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, I've got, I've got 10 of each. So I've got 40 inserts, 40 inserts, and the two matching tools for 35 quid. You can't really, you can't really complain with that. I really don't think you can, it's a good price. Uh, Maybe it doesn't, maybe it doesn't. They're the same. Yes. So there you go. I've also got some gasket paper from my old mates in Hull at RC Components of Hedden Road. No connection other than a very satisfied customer. I also buy slitting discs off them because uh, the slitting discs are really good and a really good price as well. That, that's an assorted pack of 30 sheets of assorted thicknesses for 15 quid. I don't think you can go wrong with that. Excellent. Right, what are we on with? We're not on with thread gauges. We're on with... Can you see that? Yes, we're on with gaskets. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut a neoprene gasket uh, to this pattern. Right, I touched the paintwork up where I damaged it last week. I'm going to cut an, a neoprene gasket to this pattern. Uh, and then I'm going to fit part one of the uh, vertical head and then we can have a look at part two and uh, see about putting that in position as well. So when I've got this gasket cut I will bring you back. Okay guys, thanks. that's it for now. Right folks, there we go. One neoprene gasket. It's uh, it's tough stuff, but it cuts quite easily. It won't tap out, but you can tap it to get the lines on it to uh, to cut it out. There we go. Right, I'm going to go and fit the uh, fit the gasket. Fit it to the uh, to the miller machine, and then I'll bring you back again, and we'll carry on with the assembly. Okay. See you in a bit. I just had a thought folks, uh, I'd be better off making this gasket as well first. Uh, I assume it needs a gasket, now there's oil in here, and there's no o-ring on there to seal it, so I'm assuming, yes it will need a gasket, because that goes, that goes up. I'll put a gasket on there anyway. I'll make one up and then I'll bring it back and then we'll put it on. Okay, bye for now. And there we go chaps, can you see that? Yes you can see that. Yes there we go chaps, it's uh, this fourth hole is not for, uh, it's not for a fixing bolt, it's for the alignment peg which goes in that hole there, which unfortunately I haven't got. Uh, I'm going to have to see if I can make one. It's a taper peg 
that drives through into that hole and tightens up somehow. I've got a sketch of it and I've got a dimension sketch of it so if I can work to that accuracy, it needs to be accurate, uh, I'll see if I can make one. But the idea of it is it's to fix the head at 90 degrees to the table uh, because the, there's a, a scale all the way around this because this head swivels. Uh, and uh, it really it really does need something to fix it at 90 degrees and that's what that peg does right I shall now I shall now go and start assembling it okay bring you back in a minute Oops. right folks there we are that's fitted up with the gasket so that's now on there permanently or at least till next need to use it as a horizontal mill now my engineering friend Richard said to me uh, once you get that verse clad on, you'll never use it as a horizontal again. Well, I hate to differ with him, but I've got lots of horizontal cutters, and horizontal mills are really still very, very useful, especially if you're doing things like cutting along keyways in shafts, etc., etc. Now, yes, you can do it with the vertical, but you're much more likely to break a bloody cutter than uh, you are with a horizontal. I've cut, I mean, I've, I've made shafts with long keyways in. Uh, I made one for the uh, the little Toro garden tractor, and and it was just perfect. It was just so easy. Uh, just to buzz along the shaft four times, and that was it. Keyway done. It took about uh, it kind of take more than half an hour. Whereas with this, you'd be winding really slowly with a little milling cutter in, and any moment, you know, bang, and yeah, much easier. And it doesn't take long to swap it over. Good grief, you know. Uh, once I've got a once I've got a support made for here, so that I can wind the table underneath it, take the weight off that, take the Allen screws out, and uh, drop it onto the deck, onto there, it'll be easy. I mean, I, you, you'll have seen any of you that know engineering will have seen that a lot of American milling machines have a very clever idea where they have a big pivot on here with an arm that is bolted to this head so you can pull the head out and swivel it sideways out of the way uh, and, and go back to horizontal. Cracking idea, unfortunately Harrison didn't do it. But there you go. Right, I'm going to now bring the other half round and <laughs> see if I can... The other half has got all the gears in it of course and it is quite heavy so I'm going to see if I can lift it up into position and get the bolts aligned which is going to be the the million dollar question because the bolts although they're in fixed positions on here they're in big T slots in the vertical head and uh, we're just gonna have to see if I can do it right then bring you back in a minute and there she is folks horizontal mill becomes vertical mill in that posh it's gone on lovely now I need to find myself some oil to put in there and some oil to put in there but that shouldn't be a problem because I've got what it is Shell Vitria number 72 uh, these bearings have actually greased with good old Shell Albania grease right so I can now, now I have an internet connection I can go on the internet and find the equivalents of Vitria 72 and I'm pretty sure I've got some I'm just not sure which one it is. I'm going to have to make this plug up because uh, otherwise it's going to, uh, I would have thought, pop, blow oil out. But uh, we shall see. Anyway, there it is. There's a plug that goes in there that aligns with that hole. It's a tapered plug. That's a tapered hole. And you tap it in and uh, that aligns the head exactly at zero degrees. And when you've finished doing that, when you want to turn it, you tighten the nut up, it pulls the pin out and then you take it out and uh, and lose it like somebody who owned this, used to own this head did. But there you go. Right, I shall crack on and I'll bring you back when there's something else happening. Bye now. Here she is folks. Look at that getting dark outside. It's just gone four o'clock. Raining and horrible. And here she goes folks. We have a vertical milling machine.
light. Isn't that good? I put the oil in it. Some of the oil poured out the side because I'd, there was a little tiny level plug there that I'd forgotten uh, was missing and I had to find one, but I found one. The neoprene gasket's holding up beautifully. Is it pouring any oil out of there? No, there's no oil in there. That's it. Okay, we sorted. Right, well that's it for today. So I'm going to jump in the car and bugger off home. And uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye now. Good morning people. It's Wednesday. It's uh, just after 12. And I'm still uh, tackling the thorny problem of getting this board out to the right size. Now, I can do it with this, which is a lovely little Lushington boring head. Right? Work our way down it. Unfortunately, this means I need to make another drawbar. So I need to make a half inch UNC short drawbar to hold this into the vertical head. Now, this is going to be a drawbar that can be used for everything, which is half inch UNC. Uh, but I have an idea this time to make a drawbar with a changeable thread on the end. Uh, although that might just be that might be that might be a waste of time. That's the length I have to make it. Uh, I think for the complexity involved in it, I may as well just make a drawbar for each because, as you can see here. This thread has been welded into this <laughs> rather badly. I said I was done that, but this this was the drawbar that was on the vertical head when I got it. When I got the vertical head, it had very nicely it had a little Clarkson uh, auto lock collet chuck in it uh, and a half inch uh, milling cutter, which was knackered. But number two C wasn't it? Uh, so I got a collet chuck, which was this one, which takes this. Uh, this thread, which is, I think this is a Whitworth. I think this is a Whitworth drawbar, but of course this is the drawbar for the, the vertical head, the short one. So what I shall do next is knock up a UNC uh, short drawbar. I could single point the thread, but I can't, because the somebody, uh, in their infinite wisdom, ordered a left hand tool SEL instead of an SER, which uh, a left hand tool cuts from left to right, and a right hand tool cuts from right to left. Right, and I should have ordered the SER instead of the SEL. But <laughs> this means I can cut left hand threads. Right, I can cut left hand threads, or I can uh, use it for something else. There you are. It was so cheap that it's not really worth it. It was, it was, I think it was seven quid. It really wasn't expensive. Uh, and, the, and the one I've just ordered last night is, is the same price. So there you go. So when that comes. But I now have uh, a half inch uh, UNC die. So I can I can cut the thread of the die. So what I shall do is find a piece of bar, turn it down. I'll probably just weld a nut on the end. Or I may, I may put a short thread on the end and screw it onto it and then weld it, weld it on the top. Uh, that's probably the best way. Certainly something, certainly something a bit, uh, a bit better than this, which is, I don't know what it is. It looks like it's actually been round and then had two flats machined on it, which have been damaged, and so somebody's welded it up and roughly filed it flat again so it's not it's neither one thing the other as you can probably see there it's not square uh, but it works you know I mean what can you say it works it's a drawbar drawbars are almost disposable because they do get they do get knackered up after a while right chaps I'm going to crack on with that and when I get some more to show you I'll bring you back what's this what's this uh Right chaps, I'm just re-recording because I have a feeling that the last two pieces I've uh, 
I've done I've done on time lapse. It was set on time lapse video. It's amazing how I can get it wrong every time, isn't it? Right. When I came in this morning, I realised that I need to to now create a short drawbar, a short UNC drawbar. I might be telling you all this twice because if the first piece was okay, then it was okay. I'll put it in. But there's the short drawbar that goes through the vertical head, right? That's a small Whitworth thread, which we which fits these two uh, Clark's North Lock collet chucks, right? So for which I have no collets, unfortunately, uh, or very few anyway. I haven't got a half inch one. That's all I need. So I found a piece of bar, nice. I put a lovely uh, a lovely thread on the uh, on the end with the uh, UNC die that I got from eBay. It's made a beautiful job. Uh, started it in the lathe. Uh, I've turned it down. I've turned it down to a half inch in the lathe to make it fit. And there we go. So what I'm going to do next, as I've just said on time lapse, what I'm going to do next is uh, cut this to length. Turn the end down and probably put an SAE thread on it uh, and then put a big SAE nut on it and uh, tighten it on and then, then weld it at the top just so that we know it's fixed. And that's the draw by me. So I'll bring you back when I've done that. Catch you in a bit. Here we are, folks. An example of needs must when the devil drives. I found ideal size nut. Found it was a Whitworth thread, found that I had a die for that Whitworth thread and then found to my amazement that I have got no die stock to fit it. So what I've done is I've nipped it in the jaws of the chuck, making sure that one jaw was right across, can you see that there, right across the join in the die so that it's not putting it, it's not closing it or opening it, it's just holding it in that position. And with a with the uh, thread held in the chuck, just to just not held in the chuck, just just there to centre it, uh, and a pair of mole grips, I can cut a thread on it. As I say, it's not I'm not it's not a setup I'm proud of, but it's cutting a really good thread, and I know it's square to the die, and so it's just a case of needs must when the devil drives. Okay, I'll bring you back when I finish. Bye now. And there we go, folks. It's a bit flat top because the bar is slightly undersized. But uh, you can't complain about the fit. It's perfect. So I'm going to cut that to length now and then just dome the top over and weld it. So that'll be done. And that'll be the draw bar finished. Okay. I'll bring you back when I've done it. Hallelujah. I think we're recording now. Don't know the hell's up with this. Right, here it is, he said, putting on the glove. Nicely TIG welded over. I'm just going to stick it in the chuck when it's cool and just face the back of the nut off just to uh, to get it flat because I noticed that it's not actually, it's, it's a bit of a, a crappy shaped nut, which is why I picked it, but it's also not flat now, so I'm going to shave it off until it's flat. And then that's job done after a bit of a clean up. Okay. And there we go folks, nice bit of TIG welding on the top, rounded it off on the little linish or the or oldie linish here, cleaned it up, job's a good one. One UNC uh, drawbar, I shall now uh, just stamp UNC on the top, because there's also going to be a metric one. Okay, well it's almost, uh, it's almost jacking it in time, it's almost five o'clock so I'm just going to get this stamped and then I'm going to call it a draw, so I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye now. And there it is folks, final shot of the day. The Lushington Boring Head is in. The little uh, top is on. And it says UNC on it, although it's upside down to human tip. There we go. Right. Nice oil level. That's why I had to strip it down because it, all that was smashed. I had to put a new oil level glass in it, and uh, I'm going to have to replace that top bearing. I'll get it repaired. It's very noisy when it's on higher speeds. 
on low speed you can hardly hear it, but uh, <coughs> let me give you a demo. There you go. I bet it's the first time that Lushington's been going round and round for a long, long time. Right. That's it for today, folks. Power off. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye now. Good morning, people. Sidetracked again. I've now found out that I also need a half inch Whitworth uh, drawbar and a M12 by 175 drawbar. I have been working out how I could align this centrally under the uh, no collar. And I can line that up and drop that into there like that to get it central, to get it near enough central. It doesn't, it, we're not talking to half a thou here. This is, this is a bit of rough engineering, right? Uh, but guess what? This is a Whitworth. I've also found out that my Morse taper adapter, uh, 300, uh, I'll start again, 30 International 2, two, two Morse taper is also metric. So I'm going to crack on and make a couple more draw bars while I'm in the mood. Uh, I'm fast running, out, fast running out of stock, but I'll find enough. Okay, so this is Thursday, and I'll bring you back. Bye now. Right, folks, that's a piece of cold roll. Uh, I've turned it to size uh, and I've just heated it up to glowing red and kept it there to anneal it because I'm going to cut threads on it. Uh, cold roll tends to be very patchy and very hard in places and have a hard skin on it so I give it the heat treatment to anneal it. So that's going on alright. I don't appear to have a piece of steel big enough uh, to do the Whitworth one. I might have to cobble something together. But we are going forwards. I've got an M12, I've got an M12 die, and I've got an M12 die nut as well. So uh, my my set of metric uh, taps and dies leaves a lot to be desired. They are uh, the uh, horrific non-split dies, which are the tungsten. Although a lot of people say, well, they're all right. They they cut the threads, you know. And they're cheap enough. Well, they are cheap enough, but uh, sometimes they don't cut the threads. So we're going to have a go. Anyway, we're going to have a crack, and we can always clean it up with a dyno. Uh, so there we are. We're, we're sort of shuddering forward, although once again I've got sidetracked, haven't I? I'm terrible. Right. God, it's lovely and warm here. In fact, it's just a bit... Sitting over that brazen house, it's just a bit too warm. I can see that the job is going to require not just goggles but a welding mask and gloves because it does get hot even though the heat's supposedly sapped away up the flue and gone uh, how hot is this? this is still quite hot yeah that's still quite hot up there I mean you can bear your hand on it but oh. Oh, yeah they're getting very hot I'll take them off there not a good idea to put my nice glasses on there this is just about as hot as you can bear to touch. Right, folks. Superb brazing. Bring you back when there's something more to show you. Bye now. Folks, that's the thread on, the long thread on. Uh, not brilliant thread. But I can't single point it because I've got the wrong, the wrong <laughs> tool. Uh, I've ordered the other one. It'll be here within a week, ten days. And uh, I've cut that with a dyno. I started it with the uh, with the cheapo, I don't know where they made, probably China, uh, tungsten dies, but it was obvious it wasn't going to cut a very good thread, so I let the dyno take over, and the dyno cut a perfectly usable thread. Uh, so I'm just going to swap it round now and cut the other end a short thread, just to put a nut on, and then I shall weld the nut on. And that's another drawbar finished. So by the time we've finished, we'll be able to swap over all the uh, International 30 uh, taper fitting tools that I've got, which means we've advanced a huge tech level. So this week we've got the vertical head on, got it working, topped it up with oil, realised that the top bearing is 
probably shot and needs replacing. I also found out that it isn't a gamut, it's a Timken and they're off the shelf parts so uh, although it will probably be expensive nothing like the price of gamut probably in the range of about 100 quid as opposed to about 600 quid for a gamut but there you go I also found out that gamut has been taken over by HB bearings in Huddersfield so they've moved from Colchester to Huddersfield uh, it seems like they're, uh, they're concentrating the 600 group manufacturing uh, like Colchester and Harrison and all the rest are concentrating it in West Yorkshire, which is a good thing to hear. Right, I shall crack on, turn this round, and cut the thread at the other end. Bring you back in a bit if there's anything more to tell you. Right, folks, that's Thursday uh, over with. I've got this uh, made. I'm not going to weld it tonight because I try not to do any welding uh, for the last hour in the workshop, just in case. So, weld that together, weld that end on. And uh, that's the metric draw by me. So tomorrow it's going to be the Whitworth one, provided I can find a piece of steel. Right, thanks you all for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Good morning, peoples. It's Friday, it's just after lunch, and I've just finished welding the, uh, the top on that one. So that's uh, yet another draw bar finished, and that one is clearly marked MET because it's metric. Right, I've I've found some steel somewhere, I've hidden it. Oh, it's there. I have found some steel that I can make the last one out with, out of, which is going to be Whitworth, uh, which is going to be half inch Whitworth. So I'm going to put the, make that the, uh, make that the outer end and put the Whitworth thread on that end. Uh, this is actually uh, half inch dead, so it's the right size for the Whitworth thread as far as I can see. It's about a thou, but that doesn't make any difference. And I can put, uh, I don't know what thread that is. I'm not quite sure. Could it's not uh, it's not M12. I'll have to I'll have to measure that up. But I've probably got enough for it anyway. Uh, this is actually uh, a piece off a very early Alf Becker hand control because Alf Becker started making hand controls in bulk in the village where my workshop's based and I did a lot of work for him in the early days uh, and this is some of his throwings out uh, so there you go so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to now crack on I'm going to make the Whitworth one and then we have a full complement of long and short draw bars I bet it'll be another one these sooner or later I might have to make some long ones in awkward threads to put the fittings in the horizontal uh, horizontal NT30 fitting on the Harrison, and I found that I can get uh, I can get a top bearing for the Harrison. Uh, it's not that dear; it's just over 200 quid, which sounds expensive. But if you look at the average gamut bearing, the average gamut bearing is 6700. So uh, we're not in that we're not in that ballpark at all. So 200 quid is affordable. Uh, but I'm going to, after I've finished doing this job, I'm going to whip that bearing out and uh, check it. Luckily it's the top bearing so it's easy to get out, uh, easy-ish to get out. Uh, I'm going to whip that one out, check it and see if that is the noise. I'm pretty sure it will be and if it is, I shall just buy a new bearing and fit it. And I've done with it, just bite the bullet. Right, I'll bring you back when, I've, uh, made, when I'm on with making this one. Bye now. And there we go folks. Draw bars in uh, 3 8 Whitworth, half inch Whitworth, half inch uh, uh, UNC, and metric. Uh, that's 12 mil, isn't it? Yeah, metric 12 mil. So we've now got a full complement of draw bars for the uh, vertical head, which I'm sure we will find that we buy something off eBay and it's got a different thread in it but I can't think what it would be. Right, so I'm now going to crack on and set up the, which is the last one I made, that's the last one I made. Right, that's the last one I made. It's got a, a thread on there but I hardly think it matters. They're also, I've stamped the tops from them as well so I know which is which. That thread is, is cut with a brand new holes tap and it's come out really well. 
So now I'm going to put a vise on the milling machine and I can now put the uh, the holder, the uh, half inch milling tool holder in, use the taper on the milling holder to align the uh, former in the vise, uh, centrally above the milling head, and then I can fit the uh, the boring bar, the boring head, and uh, we'll have a go at boring it out. But first, I'm going to have a brew. Bye now. Works better if you take the lens cap off. Here it is folks, here's the setup. We are almost there. Now the using the uh, using the stub end of this using that taper on there to align the uh, was it that one? Or was it that one? No, it was that one. Using the taper on there to align the hole got us quite close, but not close enough because the hole is not round as you may have guessed it's, I don't think that hole has been drilled in there I think it's been I don't know how it's been done but I can't see any holes any scratch marks from drilling it might have been forged it might have been God knows what but there you go it looks like a forging doesn't it though that looks flame cut I don't know anyway I'm gradually bringing it in to a point where as you as you rotate it we're getting a little gentle scrape on say 75% of it so what I'm going to have to do is just bore down it until it's the right size and uh, whoops sorry sorry people you're looking at that I'm going to carry on boring down it until it's the right size and see what happens okay at the moment the brew's on the go so I'm just taking it steady and getting it lined up as best I can okay bring you back when I have something more to show you there we go folks I've taken the Lushington for a couple of rides to the bottom of the hole and uh, it's almost it's almost round now and nothing disastrous has happened now you notice I'm not giving you a long tale about how to use a boring head and there's a very good reason for that I haven't a clue uh, this is the first time I've ever used one, although I've been reading up about it on YouTube. Uh, but it seems to be going very well. I'm only taking fairy cuts out. Uh, and it seems to be doing the job very well. So I'm going to carry on chewing away at it until it gets out to 35mm. Uh, okay, I'll bring you back when it's done. Bye now. Well, there we go, folks. Taken the Lushington for several rides to the bottom of that hole, and we're out to 34.15. So we're uh, the target's 35. So another couple of cuts, and we should be there. Uh, I'm only taking fairy cuts because it's only a small boring bar, uh, but it's cutting out really well. It's cutting really like cast iron, although I know it's probably a multiple casting or even cast steel. I'm not sure, uh, but it's coming out well. So, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Thank you all for subscribing. Please subscribe, because I've noticed that loads of people who watch uh, aren't actually subscribed. Press the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything, and it's a great help to me. It's a, it's a real boost when I get a new subscriber. I run around the house dancing. Right, so send us a like, send us a comment. Uh, tell me what you think. And uh, I'll see you all next week. Have a good weekend, don't get too drunk. Bye for now.